Here's a boring video for you guys, but necessary. Let's talk about bags, more specifically camera bags. Ooh. I'm traveling again next week to my homeland of Finland. It's gonna be our first time traveling as a whole family with our new kids, so um, pray for us. And over my last couple trips to Norway and Sweden, I've realized that I just don't have the proper camera bag for traveling yet. And I mean, I have a lot of bags, like a lot of bags. I have my first bag I ever got. I have a backpack. I have a roller backpack. I have a drone backpack. I have a bag for my C300. I have a bag for my monopod. For my slider. For lights. I have a small pelican. A medium one, and a big one. But none of them really fit right now for my YouTube travel, run and gun, filmmaking style. None of these bags really work for me right now. These are the things that I like to take along on my travels right now. I have a 1DX Mark II, a 60 Mark II, which I'm filming with right now. And my favorite ever lens is the 16 to 35. It's filming right here right now. I, it's right there. And if we need some zooms, the 7200, which feels like a brick, especially because I actually rarely ever use this. I mostly film on the 16 to 35. The Sigma 35 mil 1.4, if it's really low light conditions, this lens is perfect. Plus the bokeh, it's just really, really nice. The GoPro obviously hasn't come along. It's one of those just in case things. We got filters, lots of them, batteries, chargers. We got all this stuff, but there's one more thing that I need to bring that kind of ruins it all for me right now. It's the MacBook. This thing is big and it just doesn't fit into the bag that I've been using recently, which is this little guy. I like how small this thing is and I can fit all of that stuff that I just talked about into this one little bag. And the nice thing is, is that it only counts as a personal item when you're flying. So you can bring a carry-on luggage on top of this thing, or like I do a lot of times, the Phantom 4 Pro case, I bring that as kind of my carry-on luggage. But this thing cannot fit a laptop, and especially a 15 inch. It just doesn't really go anywhere. I've actually been kind of like, stuffing it in here and just closing it up and you know, it's sticking out a little bit. It's, it's not very good. I need a better solution. So I'm off to the local camera store to find the perfect camera backpack. Just like there are different cameras for different filmmaking styles, there's different bags for different purposes. There's no one perfect bag that fits every single kind of job. So here are my recommendations for what kind of bags I like to use and for what. And then we'll reveal the new bag and why I decided to go for this one. First off, I would say don't go for the sling bag. It just doesn't work very well. It's small, it doesn't have very much space. And most importantly, it's just uncomfortable to wear. It only has one strap to kind of go over it. It just, it doesn't feel good. It's not good for your back. I would not really recommend one of these bags. I would at least go for a backpack like this. It's still really small, but it's super comfortable. Now you can't fit a big laptop in here like I talked about. But if you're not traveling around or you don't need your laptop, this one is really good. And I've actually traveled to Iceland, Norway, Maui, so many different places just with this bag. This one's really good. I've taken on so many different hikes. It's comfortable, it's good. At least go for a backpack, stay away from the slings. Now this one's cool because it's a roller bag actually, like this, rolls, but it can also turn, Technical difficulties. I don't know what's going on. Guys, I think it's broken. Whew, got it. It can also turn into a backpack. So you actually have backpack straps. So this one's really handy because you can roll it along when you have nice even ground and it's gonna save your back, but then you can turn it into a backpack when you're, let's say, hiking or anything like that. So this one's really good. And I use this bag a lot for things like weddings, where most of the time I can just roll it around and it just saves my back and saves me from getting all sweaty and all that. But then sometimes you're walking around in grass or whatever, you can make it into a backpack, works really well. 
Now the only problem with this bag for traveling is that it's a little bit too big. I can't justify this as a personal item when I'm traveling. So that means that I'm kind of risking it or I'm in trouble if I take a bigger bag. They might give me heck for it. So that's why I haven't really been traveling around with this one, even though this is a really good bag. Now it doesn't have a perfect slot for your laptop, but you can put it in here and it's fine. It came with like a different case. This bag is really nice. I highly recommend something like this, especially if you're shooting weddings or if most of your shoots are in a city or that kind of normal setting. But for traveling, this one's questionable. Now Pelicans are awesome when you need a really rugged, just gonna protect all your gear kind of bag. This one's actually customized. It's made perfectly for my C300 Mark II, so the camera fits in here and all the different accessories and my main lenses all fit into this bag. And this bag, super durable, you can check it, you can do whatever you want with this. This thing is waterproof, it's gonna handle all the dust and everything like that. So if you're on a legit commercial shoot, I like Pelican cases, especially because you don't know exactly who's gonna be handling your gear on a bigger shoot. So this is gonna protect all your stuff. Pelicans are super good. But then with my YouTube type stuff right now, it's not the best because it only has wheels to roll along, but I can't just stick it on my back and go on a hike or go on some adventure. So it's limited for that, but this is a really good option. I love Pelican cases. A fun little story, we were on a road trip a couple years ago down the west coast of America and we were at this cool spot called Bixby Bridge. We finished checking it out and we packed everything in the car and started heading off. And we hit around, you know, 60, 70 kilometers and all of a sudden the back trunk just flung open and bags started flying out. And two of the bags that flew out were my Pelican with my drone in there and my brother's camera bag. Now his wasn't a pelican and he had some damage to his stuff. His laptop was a little bit messed up and I think some of his other stuff was a little bit scratched up and messed up. But my pelican, everything was fine in there. My drone was totally fine, just bouncing down the road, no issues at all. So pelicans are super good, but they are bulky. So what do I recommend for YouTube, run and gun, travel filmmaking, all that stuff? Well, it's this guy. Ah. Now, I just wanna say quickly, I am not sponsored to say any of this stuff. Not everything on social media is sponsored. This is not a sponsored video, so these are just my thoughts and things that work for me. So the reason I like this bag is, well, I can fit all of that stuff that I talked about straight in here, including the MacBook Pro 15 inch. So let's take a look. So we got tons of space in here and I'm hoping to get the Mavic Air that I could just stick it in here and I don't have to deal with the big Phantom 4 Pro box, the big gray box that everybody always wonders. What's in the box? And the nice thing is I can fit a laptop in here. It's got this nice little pouch. Let's do this. Fits perfectly in there. Fit all my camera gear in here, the laptop, hopefully a new drone soon. Everything fits perfectly into this one little bag. Now I haven't used this bag yet, but I know Peter, Peter uses this one. It's called the Pro Tactic, I think. Yep, Pro Tactic 450AW. Um, I'm gonna be using this one. I hope it's my solution because I have a lot of bags, but I think this is gonna be the right bag for me for this kind of filmmaking. And like I said, there's no perfect bag for every single purpose, every kind of filmmaking, every project but you need to do your research and find out which one's the best for you. And bags are expensive, like this one was $350 Canadian, that's pretty expensive. But the nice thing is I buy this once and it's probably gonna last me for the rest of my lifetime. I've been using those same bags for so long already. So there's a lot of things in filmmaking that you invest in and you get so much return out of it. Now a bag doesn't seem super sexy to invest in, but something like a camera body, that's gonna have to be renewed every couple of years and they cost a lot. So there's a lot of money that goes into these. Don't chintz out on the bags. If it costs you a little bit more, just you know, divide it by the 10 years that you're gonna be using it for. It's not very much extra money. Don't chintz out on a bag. Buy the bag that fits best for your filmmaking purposes. So I'm gonna be taking this guy on a nice little trip to Finland with my family, but I'm also doing a little work trip in Sweden. Peter's gonna be there too. Should be a really fun time. I'm super excited for that. And maybe I'll give you some more thoughts about it once I've used it a little bit more. I don't know if that interests you guys at all. 
And like I said, bags are kind of a boring topic, but it's really important. It's actually one of the things that really changes how your shoots go. If your bag just doesn't work for you, you can't take it wherever you need to, or it's causing you back pain or whatever, that's really gonna hinder your shoot. So do your research, take your time, and find the right bag for you. I hope you had fun watching this. I, I don't know if you got anything out of this, but maybe you just enjoyed watching. Uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I'd love for you to be a part of this community. And guys, enjoy the filmmaking process and go get some of those travel feels. Can't wait to travel again.